Example 5.11. In this example, a fuel element of a nuclear reactor has a shape of a plain wall of thickness 2L. It's cooled by convection at both sides with a given convection coefficient and T infinity. At normal operating conditions, it has a uniform heat generation of 10 to the 7. However, there was a departure from the steady state conditions, which increased the value of heat rate generation to 2 times 10 to the 7. We need to use the explicit final difference method to determine the temperature of the fuel element after 1.5 seconds. The information is given for the properties. We treat this, L, this problem to be one dimensional. We consider that even though there was a sudden change of the heat generation, the values remain constant, one for the steady conditions and one for the transient conditions. We take the properties to be constant. We have no radiation in this problem and is considered to be a transient problem since it is a sudden change of circumstances in the problem. The first step in this problem is to divide the element into nodes. Note that this is a plain wall case in which the conditions at both sides are equal and therefore we could divide it by symmetry and we're going to treat only half of it in which one of the sides becomes insulation. We're going to divide this side of the problem into five different elements Therefore, we're going to have six different nodes. Note that we have three different type of nodes. One node that is exposed to the insulation. We have a second group in which is exposed to uh, convection. And we have a third group in which we have interior nodes. So we're going to derive the equation for each type of the nodes. We're going to start the analysis with the general equation for interior nodes. Uh, notice that this equation is given with m for position and p for time. We rearrange this equation for uh, the current node at the future time. We start with node 1. Node 1 is not an interior node, but we will use a simplification having the fact that we have symmetry. Since we have symmetry, we could say that the value of the previous node at the current time is equal to the one further. So if you think about it, if this is symmetry, the value of this node is equal to the same value of this node because we said this is the mirror image of each other. By using that analogy, we could see to say that T1 at P plus 1 is equal to the forward number uh, twice T2 plus the heat generation divided by k plus 1 minus 2 for your number t1 of p. If we use this uh, no, uh, this equation, we could find that for node 2, we said that t2 p plus 1 is equal to the foreign number, and in this case we have t1 plus t3 x squared divided by k plus 1 minus 2 for a number t2p or 24 node. So this is node 2, 3, 4, and 5. So t3 p plus 1 going to give us for a number t2 plus t4 plus q dot x squared divided by k plus 1 minus 2 for a number t3p. We go t4 p plus 1 is equal to for a number the previous one t3 1 after t5 Q dot x square k plus 1 minus 2 for a number t4 p. And we do the last one t5 p plus 1 
for your number. The previous one is T4. The next one is T6 plus cube dot x squared divided by k plus 1 minus 2 for a number t5 to the p. For note 6, we use the relationship given in your book, which is obtained by balance of energies. So we said t6 p plus 1 is equal to 2 for a number of t5 to the p plus the weird number of t infinity plus q delta x squared divided by k, 2k, sorry, plus 1 minus 2, the foreign number, minus 2, p number, foreign number, t6 to the p. Once you have developed the different equations for each one of the nodes, the next step is to establish the stability criteria. It is important to select a stability criterion which is more restrictive, and in that is more difficult to accomplish in order to um, restrict the, uh, the code and make sure that it converges properly. For this particular case, we're going to select the forward number 1 plus the beard number, and it has to be less than one half. In this case, we're going to evaluate the beard number to be equal to h, and the critical length is going to be the delta x, k. Notice that in this case, we have delta x to be equal to two millimeters. With that information, we have the beard number to be 0.33. So this value of delta x depends critically on the number of nodes that we selected. So in this case, we have six nodes or five spaces. That's why we have a value of delta x to be two millimeters. With that information, and if we put this value of beard number into this inequality, we could find that the Fourier number has to be less than 0.466 to encourage or to be able to reach convergence. If we define the Fourier number once again, we said that is going to be alpha times uh, the delta t divided by the delta x squared. So notice that what we're looking for is what is the ideal delta time, delta t that we could use in our code. We're going to see that the delta t is going to be this limited value of the Fourier number the delta x, which is proportional to the nodes that we selected, and alpha. That means that the delta t that we have to use has to be less than 0.373 for us to be able to have convergence in our code. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to select a value of 0.3, which is going to give us a Fourier number of 0.375. Okay, now. Before we go into MATLAB and solve this equation by iterations, we need to find out what is the initial temperature that uh, this wall has before the changes happen. So we know that at the beginning it had an initial uh, value of Q dot, which it was steady up to a point. Then we could find out that the temperature of the whole bar is going to be proportional to Q uh, K minus and this information comes from equation 3.47 from your textbook. Notice that for us to be able to find that that temperature TS, we go back to once again chapter 3, equation 351, and we know that that value is going to be T infinity plus Q dot L divided by H. So these two equations are going to give us the initial value of each one of the nodes at time equal to zero, meaning at the steady state. And once that happens, the new value of Q is going to be different. And that's when we're going to start the analysis of a transient uh, value. 
The first step in the calculations in MATLAB is to calculate the steady temperature at each one of the nodes. We enter all the information of the problem, as is provided here. We calculate the values of the BO number and the for number. We start by calculating the temperature of the surface exposed to convection. Then we do a for loop for the remain for the nodes, and then we calculate two things. One, what is the value of x based on the this is the delta x and this is the position of the node. So the, for example, at the first node, the value of x is equal to zero. So the first node is one minus one gives you zero. That's why you get the value of x to be equal to zero. Then we evaluate the temperature at that x uh, using the equation provided in the step before. We run this section and we get the steady state conditions. Notice that we have node one through six and we have the different values of the temperature. Notice that as expected, the side that is exposed to the convection has a lower temperature than the one that is close to the insulation part. The next step in the calculation is to determine the temperature at each one of the nodes at each value of delta t until it reaches the final temp time of 1.5 seconds. We start by setting up P, which is the iteration to be 1, T to be 0 because of the current time, and the goal after 1.5. We're going to run a while loop until the time reaches that goal value. We start with P and we increase it by 1 so that we could do the second iteration. Since the first iteration, the first value, we already know it from the, insulated, from the um, steady state conditions. We find the value of t similar to how we find the value of x by using iterations. Notice that, for example, for the first iteration, we got iteration 2. 2 minus 1 uh, will be equal to 1 times delta t. So the next time that we evaluate is time equal to 0.3. So then we create a for loop for all the nodes. We go through 1 to 6. We calculated x in the same way that we did previously and we do an if statement for the three different groups that we have. We have the equation that we had for the insulation uh, node, then we have another one for the convection node, and the remaining of the nodes are done with the interior form. We run this equation, and then we display the results this way. Notice that what we have here is we have time, so a time equal to zero, these values, are equal to the steady state cases and notice that as time progresses the temperature changes because the value of q increase we see that all the temperatures in each one of the nodes will be increasing over time please go back and make sure that you understand the different steps within the code and understand the behavior of the temperature in a transient problem